The loudness meter panels in Isotope 2 includes measurements used to ensure loudness compliance when delivering media for broadcast television or streaming services. Loudness measurements are based to the ITU RBS1770 recommendations, which defines audio measurements algorithm for determining true peak level signal and subject the loudness over the course of a program. Let's go ahead and see how Insight 2 displays these readings. One of the problems that emerged, especially during broadcast, was loudness in terms of volume of the adverts compared to the program material around it. In the past, the only meter reading used was peak reading. The only problem with the peak meters is that it doesn't give us information about loudness in terms of RMS. So going back to the volume of adverts, companies, in order to make their ads louder than anybody else, had to compress the material heavily in order to reach the highest peak meter reading bringing the subjective loudness completely up, creating a problem of having ads way louder than the program material around them. The ITU, International Telecommunication Union, and the EBU, the European Broadcast Union, create a series of documents that would comprise loudness meter specification that later became the BS1770. In the US, the adverts loudness war became such an issue that legislation needed to step in generating what is known to be the CALM Act, Commercial Advertisement Loudness Mitigation Act, required by the U.S. Federal Communication Commission in order to bar the audio of television commercials from being broadcast louder than television programs. The CALM Act in the U.S. uses the BS-1717 to determine loudness standards for program material using the ATCSC A85. In Europe instead, the EBU developed the R128. They both follow the BS1770, but they have slight differences in metering loudness targets. So let's go ahead and take a look at each loudness meter parameters contained in Insight 2. The loudness meter panel feature dynamic view configurations based on the height of the meter panel, loudness measurements, common loudness standard target presets, and target control panel for customizing the meter target and loudness measurements in gate mode. So on the left side, we have a meter displaying the short terms. Short-term meters average the loudness over the course of 3 seconds. Short-term measurements are very useful for monitoring intermediate trends of loudness. Generally, short-term loudness measurements are never gated, regardless of the currently selected gate option. We're going to be talking about gate options later on this course. On the right side of our display, we got the momentary meter. This meter gives us a near almost instantaneous reading of the loudness, averaging it over the course of 400 milliseconds. Momentary loudness as well measurements are never gated. Underneath this meter, we got the momentary maximum. This reading displays the maximum momentary loudness value measured over the duration of the entire loudness calculation. Lastly, we have the integrated loudness meter in the center. This is the meter that is going to give us the integrated figure for the whole program. Integrated loudness is an infinite average that generates a single value for the entire duration of the calculation. It measures loudness over an infinite period of time, including any selected gate threshold. There is another very important measure to keep under control, which is called loudness range. The loudness range meter is displayed over the source material as a wide vertical bar along the left edge of the integrated loudness meter, also known as LRA meter bar. This measures the loudness range of the source material over the course of the entire loudness calculation. Now, loudness range is measured in LU, loudness units, where 1 LU is equal to 1 decibel. The loudness range pretty much measures the dynamic range contained in the overall program. The LRA targets can be set to a value within the range of 0 LU and 30 LU. Any LRA measurements that fall between the two targets value will be considered as in range, and the reads out will be displayed in white text. Any LRA value that will fall outside the LRA target range will be displayed in red. All this to say that as long as you hit the integrated loudness figure, your program will be up to specs. Also note that because the final part of your loudness compliance specs is the true peak level of your program, for EBU standards, the maximum peak level is at minus 1 dB true peak. Instead, for the ITB and the ATSC A85, they're using a true peak reading of minus 2 dB TP. Under the Option tab, we can also change gate settings. Inside gives you three different gating options for loudness calculation in loudness meter panel. 
Gating is employed in loudness measurements in order to exclude the quieter section of a program from lowering the overall loudness measurement. Insight gives us three different options for gating, being off, dialog, and program. When off is selected on the gating option, means that the loudness measurements are based on the BS1770, and that means that no gating methods are enabled when calculating the loudness. When dialog is selected, this option enables loudness gating methods that detect if dialog is present in a source material. Only segments of the program where dialog is detected will contribute to the integrated loudness measurement. Program instead enables a minus 10 LU relative gating threshold when calculating the loudness in order to exclude lower level noise from decreasing the overall loudness measurements of a program. The BS1772 3 and 4 revision of the ETUR BS1770 recommendation required that at minus 10 LU relative program gate threshold is applied when calculating integrated loudness. Now when it comes to calculation settings there are three other options that is worth taking a look at which are displayed on the upper right corner of Insight. The first one is the reset button. The reset button once clicked manually resets all the loudness calculation in the loudness and in the history meter, which we're going to see shortly. When pause is clicked, it frees all meters in the loudness, history and spectrogram meter panels. All values in the above mentioned meters are retained when pause is enabled, regardless of the transport state in your Pro Tools. Lastly, one of the most useful feature in my opinion is the hold button. When the hold button is enabled, the current loudness values will be retained when the transport is stopped. That means that the calculation will continue from the last known value when the transport starts back again. Of course, when this option is disabled, the loudness meter calculation will reset each time the transport state changes. Now that we know how to properly read the loudness meter panel inside Inside 2, make always sure to get a good reading out of the loudness meter panel in order to produce loudness compliance mixes when delivering media for broadcast TV and streaming services. I'll see you in the next tutorial. Ciao.